Man, what's up, everybody? This is life. What it do, y'all? It's your boy, Young Swallow. It can look at the Sasha Rist. And this is Just Do the Damn Thing Podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Just Do the Damn Thing podcast. I believe this is episode 67. Uh, we, we we're in building there. them up, man. We're building them, them, right? up, them, stacking man. them up. You know, Just do the keep, damn thing. Keep pushing, guys. No matter right. what you're doing, if, if it's not going how you want to, like it's not going to happen like that right away. So you got to keep pushing. You got to keep stay going. Focused. Yep. Like we always say, stay focused. Mm-hmm. And most of all, don't quit. That's the biggest thing. Don't quit That's on your it. dreams, man. Oh, he's learning right now, see? <laughs> yeah, don't, don't quit. quit. That's facts. Uh, so, Suelo, what do we got going on for today, brother? All right, so today we have a very good question, a uh, philosophical question that we should all just reflect and ask ourselves one day. And it's, uh, I'll have you go first. What is the meaning of a good life? Facts. Okay, for me, um, the meaning of a good life is being able to do what I love without... Um, without having to think about the the uh the pressure of life you know Mm -hmm. because you know we have to work we have to do all these other things just to survive but Mm -hmm. a good quality of life would be able to pay my bills without thinking about it um be able to go on vacation without thinking about it (laughs) right not having to beg your job for two weeks of pc whatever man please yeah (laughs) how you feel stayed and everything without worrying yeah exactly and so of course like you know i got two kids and everything i also have a wife she's amazing so being able to spend time with them without having to worry about man do i have to go to work like can i just take a week off to just be with my family you know and then be able to do things for them is pretty much ultimately what i would love to do right Uh, so then so to live that lifestyle how would you finance that you know what i mean because obviously we work we have jobs to pay our bills so we just can't hang out with our kids and our wife all day right so how, how would you pay for that lifestyle well now that i know what i know the mindset has to be totally different from a young age so the things that I've been hearing about now, like from Myron Golden, is like mm-hmm. being able to train uh, somebody to have financial literacy and have the uh, responsibility, the ability to respond mm-hmm. all by their uh, age of 13. They can mm-hmm. live in the world, know exactly what decisions to make at, at financial and all other kind of things. Mm-hmm. So now that I know the financial game a little bit more, I'm capable, I would have been capable of working at 16 stacking my money up mm-hmm. and then by the time i'm 18 being able to open a brokerage account and doing other things with investments um i would have dropped all of that money into investments and everything like that and by that time you know i was making an okay amount of money so mm-hmm. i believe i would have already been oh for two years uh working where i was in the beginning i think i would have already had like 40 grand in the bank so wow. Yeah. I would have been able From 16 to, to 18. Yeah, 16 to 18. Yeah. Okay. If I would have just saved the way I was supposed to, I would have right. had easily 40 grand to be able to put in investments. Mm-hmm. So I would have dropped all that into different types of stocks and real estate and all like that. And that way I can get a passive income mm-hmm. that matches the income from my job that I would have or my career that I would have. Because at that point, more than likely I can focus on my career being able to have an investment like yeah. that. Right. And that's what I would love to so do. So you would be living yeah. off your investments is what exactly. you're saying. Exactly. Living okay. off my investments. Um, and then I would be able to give quality in the um, in the thing that I do right now. We do music and everything mm-hmm. like that. So I'd be able to put out more music, record more. And then also if I take, if I do take a, um, you know, a leave of absence for, from the music and doing shows mm-hmm. and selling stuff and promoting and all that kind of stuff, I can take a couple weeks off and you know spend time with my family right and vacation like that. Whatever. vacation and do whatever because i'm working for myself i don't have to clock in all the time right now a lot of people may think that's far-fetched because we just we're just not educated in that, in <laughs> yeah. that way so as yeah. soon as it as soon as we say something like that it's automatically a scam yeah or it's automatically oh you don't know what you're talking about but it's like mm. it's like think about it like all these other 
people that have really big businesses and they can live pretty much however they want to, mm -hmm. all of them have companies that are either publicly traded, they also have a ridiculous amount of real estate that they own, mm -hmm. and you know, they just, but they knew how to take steps to get there. Mm -hmm. Not all of them were rich from the get-go. No. You know, yeah. Some of them came from other countries, just like, you know, our guests here, mm -hmm. um, and being able to build it while they were here. Right. You know, came yeah. from nothing and yeah. you know, just learn. Right, yeah, so, so, that's the meaning, so that's how you would describe it, right? The meaning of a good life to you is being able to spend quality time with your family and living mm -hmm. off your investment so you don't have to be stressed about working a job exactly. and things like that. And living within my means um, and right. everything yeah. like that, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then the one, the biggest thing is uh, something I think you're going to bring up, so I'll let you bring up that point. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's also a part of that. Right. <laughs> okay, so I'll just go ahead and jump into mine then. Um, so... I would say mine is very similar to yours. Um, I, you're way more into like the investments and stuff than, than I am. You yeah, know, I have a few things invested in, but um, so the meaning of a good life to me is finding that inner peace. And I wouldn't mind, you know, not being in having these crazy investments if I have a full time income from my music, right? Because that's what would bring me peace is going hard every day in the studio making music making content promotion whatever i gotta do right to me that's worth the effort that's worth the stress and the pressure that comes with it because at the end of the day it's not really stress and pressure because you're enjoying what you're doing yep you know, I mean? Where, you know cause like right now I'm working a job and like I get stressed out and I'm like damn like this isn't even my company yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean like I'm right. stressed right. like it's my company and it's not you know what I mean to me that's not worth it and I think, you know, I don't think we ever truly find 100% peace and don't be at peace at all times, right? You know, life has its ups and downs, you know, but the pressure and the stress that I would go through is a definitely 100% worth it because it's for my craft, it's for my music, for my gift, you know, because wow. we're all ultimately here to contribute to the world however we can, you yeah. know, and my gift just happens to be I make music, it's inspirational, I try to help others, you know, so... Finding that peace to me is more important. If I could make the money that I make from my uh, full-time job, make that in music, to me that's already winning. Oh, fact. You know what I mean? No, like yeah, people yeah, want to make these millions of dollars and all that stuff. Like we all want to make a million yeah, dollars, of course, all. right? Of course. But we course. also know that money isn't everything. To me, having that peace of mind is more important than money because once you have that peace, giving me more money isn't going to make me more peaceful. No. Right? Like, I'm already at peace, you yeah. know? And um, there's actually an interesting statistic that says your level of happiness doesn't change after you make 70K a year. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, insane. Yeah, yeah. So, after you hit 70K, your level of happiness doesn't, you could go up to a million dollars, two million, your level of happiness doesn't change. You know, so to me, that just proves that money isn't everything. No, you of know, of not. course we need it. I'm not trying to downplay like we don't need money. Like Swallow's broke. Like, <laughs> no, like, of course we need money. Of course I want to finance my lifestyle and, you know, I'm married, provide for my wife and one day have kids and provide for my family, of course. But if I'm not at peace within, I'm not able to provide for my Back. family. And right. notice that I actually never said anything about a number of what, how much I want to make right. as just like enough to sustain the lifestyle without having to think about it. So like mm -hmm. if I'm getting a, let's just say, you know, my monthly income at the job right now is $3,000. Mm -hmm. If I can make that exact same thing in, in my investments, mm -hmm. now that opens up time, but I'm still getting paid the exact same <laughs> exactly. amount. Exactly. I don't yeah. have to make a hundred grand and above all the time. Right. I can, but I also have to be smart with my money as well mm -hmm. and that's what we're and live not, within, and live within like my you means, said. like i said because what we tend to do you know we buy all the like we buy sh jordans that cost <laughs> 150 uh, dollars 200 you know, 200 dollars and we buy a whole bunch of them and then some of us will buy, go buy the always have to buy the newest iphone or whatever the case may be but if you if you're at peace mm -hmm. you don't need those you things. don't need all exactly it's just materialistic yeah, you know what i mean exactly, exactly. As long as you have your health, like you're saying, your health, physical and mm -hmm. mental. Your health, um, yes. As long as, you, of course, you have to have some money coming in. So mm -hmm. hopefully that's either your investments or you're doing something you love. Like you said, your mm -hmm. music, our music. Exactly. That would, 
that would sustain it. That's a that's a good and life the, to me. And that's a great life. And then have inner peace. And mm -hmm. That's great. I, yeah, we don't. Yeah, I yeah. agree wholeheartedly. Hundred percent. Yeah. Sasha, well, for me, actually, guys, it's like it's money and health. Yeah. <laughs> but I can <laughs> say money because I come from another country, so it's a whole different situation. Like people in Venezuela have to. Right now, we have to survive mm -hmm. instead of living. Yeah. So for me, basically, of course, health because without health, you cannot work, you cannot do anything. Yeah, without your health, you're nothing. Yeah, yeah. you're nothing. nothing. Yes. You're not gonna be in bed and making money. That's that's impossible. You at least have to be in a computer. Right. If you don't at feel good, that. like yeah. you know. So, but for me, it's money. Not because I'm a materialista. Mm -hmm. Como sería? Like I'm not yeah. materialistic. Yeah. Materialistic, but. Um, I come from a struggle, so I just want to help my family, and I know having the money to provide to my family, I'm gonna be good. I'm mm -hmm. gonna be like, okay, I'm good. But first of all, too, is like you had to love yourself. Mm -hmm. You had to have a mental health stable, which is really hard. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> no, I think we all <laughs> struggle with it. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Because if you're not right, how are you gonna help somebody else? Exactly. But I think for real, for real, the two keys are like health and money, because with those two, you're. You cannot buy water without money. Yeah, you cannot, you right, know, you cannot. Like, how are you gonna provide? Yeah, you're not People gonna pay your bill, you stuff, like you exactly. know, stuff like that. You cannot eat without because even if you wanna do a little garden in your house, you have to <laughs> right. maintain a little garden somewhere how. Mm -hmm. And now everything is like payable, so mm -hmm. you you had to you had to have money yeah, <laughs> no matter no, what, yeah, and you sure. had to work for it too. Exactly, you have to work. Find for a it. way to. In like he said, investment or like find a way to grow your money and not just spend your money in the stupid ways, mm -hmm. and like be smart with what you're doing and that's a good life for me. Like be smart, mm -hmm. be good, be healthy, having a little bit income, no matter how much it is, but be smart with it. Like multiply the income exactly and all that type of stuff. Yeah, because because you know for the viewers, I'm not sure if they know because you're from Venezuela. Yeah. So you have all your family there, right? Yeah, I have all my family there and they really struggle and the inflation is really, really mm -hmm. insane. Yeah. So today something costs like $10 and tomorrow will cost 20 just because they want to. Mm -hmm. And it will not be, uh, oh, next week it's going to be down. No, yeah. no, no, it's go up and it go up. It's never going to go down. Yeah. So it's really unstable, my family and like... It, things that are changing and things that are better now, but it's still like a lot, like the majority of the po um, population in Venezuela mm -hmm. is really poor. Yeah. And they're really struggling right now. Yeah, that's how it is. Um, so did you want to add to that or can we ask her a few questions? No, we can ask her a few questions. Yeah, no, so no. I, I, I just want to, um, because I'm very interested, you know, in your background, where you come from. So just okay. want to tell us a little bit more about your life and growing up in Venezuela and how that was. Okay, growing up in Venezuela was really, for me, it was really like <coughs> hard and beautiful at the same time. Because when I grew up, my parents got separated, like they, they separated. They so, separated? Um, it was really hard for me and then my mom, my grandma died, my uncle died, my mom had uh, a tumor. Oh, so wow. it was a lot of bunch of shit going on in my life mm -hmm. when I was like 10 to 12 to 10 to 13 years old. So mm -hmm. maybe that's why I got influenced with the rap theme because the rap made me to like express myself about my situations mm -hmm. about okay with rap I can like let all this shit yeah, <laughs> no, <laughs> in the paper yeah. and like feeling good about it after and like I went to rap and like, I started doing rap when I was like 12 and like singing all this harsh shit and people would be <laughs> like what like you just 12 years <laughs> right, old like you know old, like, right? like and you don't know what I'm going through yeah. and like my family wasn't poor like, at that moment but we struggled a lot when my mom Mm -hmm. got sick because we had to sell everything so mm -hmm. to maintain that treatment and all that stuff because yeah. having a tumor is not easy man so <laughs> I can only imagine. and i'm really glad that my mom is still fighting with it and still good and mm -hmm. everything but it was really hard for me to like i'm glad now and i appreciate like growing up early mm -hmm. how, right that's how can past, i say right? it right more mature but because everything like my friends my people be like oh you're so mature how old are you and you're just like <laughs> 17 oh what 17 you know like stuff like that yeah. so i'm like yeah because i'm going through a lot but now mm -hmm. that i'm like understanding things better and life better i i'm really grateful for everything that i've got have gone through in mm -hmm. venezuela even with music and coming out of here just for a better future 
-hmm. because Venezuela when I when I left, it was 2016, we were going, like, we didn't have food in the supermarkets. Yeah. Everything was, like, crazy. Like, we had una dictadura, como se dice? Dictadura. Dic dic no, dictatorship. 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 Yeah. So, mm -hmm. it's like, you cannot, it, you cannot do anything. Like, yeah. everything is you is really, really annoying. Mm -hmm. And when I moved here, the, the first goal was like, okay, I'm going to work, I'm going to study, I'm going to, you know, the, the American dream, I'm going right, to right, help right. my family, which is not <laughs> true, 100%, <laughs> you have to really work hard for it. Yeah. And my mind, cha my mindset changed completely, like, when once I got here and I understand the process to, okay, I'm a credit score, okay, I need to do investments, okay, mm -hmm. I had to do this, because in Latin America, it's a whole different mindset. Yeah, oh, they're just trying yeah. to survive, just make as much money as you can, yeah, and and buy like, food, and and that's it. <laughs> and if you have a house, you're blessed, you know, yeah. or if you have a little business, you're blessed. But you're mm -hmm. not thinking about, oh, what I, what I can do for a wellness life or, right. what I, you know, stuff mm -hmm. like that. You're just like, okay, uh, I'm going to do this. Day because by this day, right? Like, yeah, yeah, because this is a smart decision right now. So it, it was really amazing and hard for me at the same time to grow up in Venezuela, come mm -hmm. over here, adapt to another thing, learn English by my own doing everything by my own and then for one reason like I told you guys before like my the music I was been there mm -hmm. so with the music I tried like you say like be motivated yeah. inspire people like hey this is my reality you right and 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 people can uh relate to it because a lot of people yeah. go through the same things you yeah. know and that's the beautiful thing about music yep but. that's what it is mm -hmm. I really love my country, though. <laughs> yeah, <Make me> emotional. <laughs> Venezuela, for sure. Um, okay, so let, let's. Uh, so we're gonna ask you a few questions. You know, sure. interview. Um, so these are two questions I ask everybody. I'll ask the first one, then I'll let Joe go. So the first one is, what's the hardest thing you've been in, uh, been through in the music industry, and how did it make you a better person? Okay, I think the biggest thing is being nervous about like the people that is around me or mm -hmm. like being insecure about my abilities or like mm -hmm. oh do I, I'm doing a good job or not I'm right. like making people happy like if I go to a studio that I produce that I don't know I will be like okay I want to make sure that make sure that they're good yeah I make yeah. sure that, I, that I'm not wasting their time because I don't like to waste people time I For get sure. 10 minutes early to every every place that I'm going I, mm -hmm. I like to be on time I like to I don't like to lag mm -hmm. and I don't like to lose time and I don't want people to lose their time either yeah, so sure. I'm just like the hardest thing is that you know like ha like basically fight with my nervous and like my insecurities mm -hmm. and just go and do it and like once I do it it's just like okay they liked it okay it's cool. <laughs> you know you like just get that relief off your shoulders right yeah, yeah and I've been getting better but I'm still like struggling sometimes sometimes maybe because the mood that I am mm -hmm. and yep. I'm just like oh shit I'm nervous so what if I'm doing a good job and I'm just like oh my god yeah. like, you know but yeah that's I think that's the hardest thing yeah no I, I think I think all artists you know especially early on go through that even the experienced ones you know what yeah, I mean like yeah, yeah. you still you still have a little bit of doubt you know a little bit of nervousness but I think that just means that you want to be great. You know, yeah. means that, that you, means you care. care. Mm -hmm. You know, means yeah. that that you care and you want to be great and you take it serious. So you're kind of hard on yourself. You know what I mean? But yeah. I, I think that's normal for any artist that takes their craft seriously. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, what it is. Uh, so my my question would be: um, <coughs> outside of music, what are your hobbies? Like, what do you like to do besides music? I think, well, when I was a kid, I used to do lumber, actually, mm -hmm. for like... Lumber? Like yeah. wood? Like chopping wood? No, like lumber, no, like... Oh, lumber. Oh, I heard lumber. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Chop wood? Okay. No, no. That was crazy. That's really good. That's good. Yeah. 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 No, lumber, like wood. Yeah. 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 Worry so many times. I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop because right, I don't want right. you to be scared. But mm -hmm. one of my biggest hobbies will be like swimming for sure. But mm -hmm. it has to be in the ocean. I don't, I don't feel good swimming in the pool. Yeah, no, <laughs> why, why, why the ocean, not in the pool? I just feel, I don't know why, but maybe because I grew up in a tropical country where like, mm -hmm. la playa estaba tres horas, you know, like right. three hours away. You gotta, you gotta enjoy it for uh -huh. the ocean and like everything. So. The ocean makes me every time that I went to the to like to la playa because mm -hmm. no quiero decir la palabra. Cada vez que iba a la playa, it was just like 
I be I came back with inspiration for music. I like it made me feel good. I like to swim right. in the ocean because it was just like peaceful mm -hmm. and, and just be and in touch with uh, nature, nature, basically. Yeah, yeah. and sometimes it was scary because you know you go deep. Right. I like to go deep, oh, so <laughs> <laughs> so it's like mm, so it's a little bit yeah, too no, cold here. <laughs> but I, I I still enjoy it for sure. Yeah, that's what's up. <laughs> I like the longboarding thing because yeah, I'm, a, he's I'm a skateboarder. So oh, nice! I've nice. been skating all my life, so that's that's dope. And then of course, swimming. Swimming is one of the best things you can do for great for your health, low, like we said. Health. You know, without your health, you're nothing. Exactly, yeah. man. That's why I can't wait till summer because I'm gonna be swimming like crazy. That's right. <laughs> okay, so then my second question to you is, what's the best piece of advice another artist has given you? Well, like I was talking, I think my best advice will be like, be yourself and mm -hmm. don't let no one change you don't be scared even i struggle with it i know everybody struggles with it mm -hmm. but like don't be scared about what people are going to think about you don't just let your feelings go release as much as you can whatever you have there just release it don't mm -hmm. wait for it because you don't know what song is going to be a hit you can think that <laughs> the song that you like is going to be a hit but probably you put it out and you do all these great yeah. things and people don't like your song right. and you're going to feel disappointed so mm -hmm. just go, don't go hard on yourself, love yourself and accept it. Like, oh, I don't look good in that photo. Ah, fuck it, I'm just going to post it. <laughs> or, yeah. oh, I don't, I don't like to shoot this, this video here. Just do it and mm -hmm. post it. Because right now, the more real that you are, the more people connect with you. Yeah. It's cool to have all these fakes and all this, like, perfect project. I'm not saying it's wrong. <laughs> right, right. You can... I have quality videos too, I have everything, but sometimes I'm like, okay, I cannot do a quality video, well, I had to do it with my phone, you know, mm -hmm. and like, just put yourself out more as you can and be authentic, be different, yeah. and like, connect your audience to you. Right. That would be my best advice. Yeah, I, I think that's that's great advice. I think every artist should strive for that rather than going with what's trending and what's popping, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, be yourself, because if you notice, if you study the artists that have the longevity, are the ones that are unique and they're authentic you mm. know like they right. are themselves and their fans their core fans you know who automatically comes to mind for me with that is andre 3000 andre 3000 <laughs> yeah that's crazy right and he's had a long career because he's authentic he talks about what he t I, I don't agree with everything he talks about right but it connects with a lot of people and people yeah. appreciate the realness you mm -hmm. know and people can spot the fakeness and the thing that's like trendy yeah it might be trendy right now and like you might be popping and have followers yeah. now but once that trend is gone so is the rest of your career yeah and it's a difference too into like uh artists of from tiktok as mm -hmm. an artist with longevity like right, yeah. you can be an artist on tiktok and you cannot be an artist on tiktok in a week after but if you're <laughs> yeah. doing something different that connects with the people you're going to be an artist for a long time right exactly, exactly. tiktok or no tiktok no matter the <laughs> platform you know as long as you stay authentic yeah. and stay real and that's what we strive here for at the omg brand so for sure yeah that, sure because if you make if you're authentic you're gonna make the trend Exactly. Right. Yeah. You're, You're gonna, gonna be make the trendsetter. Yeah, the trendsetter. yeah exactly. exactly. You're gonna be the trendsetter for sure. sure. And that that one, what you just said there, holds dear to me because literally, uh, one of the reasons why I rap is because of my brother Corey, and uh, mm. he shout actually, out Corey. Shout out to him. Shout he out. Uh, he just got out of jail. He lives in Fresno again. Mm -hmm. And the crazy thing is, um, he his group that he created was called the Trendsetters. <laughs> nice. So I, I automatically was just always on that. So that's yeah. that's what yep. I like. Yeah. So yeah. Dope. All right. You got another uh, question? Oh yeah. My question is: So in the next five years, if you were capable of achieving your dream, what would that dream look like? Well, my dream is more like being being um, knowing as a songwriter, top of the best one, of course, because <laughs> mm -hmm. that's something that I want to do to feel like basically my ego type of thing, you know, <laughs> yeah. like I want to be like, oh shit, yeah, I do this shit right. Mm -hmm. no, that's, um, that's good. Definitely, I want to like help my community and my people with my dream. Back in Venezuela. Yes, I want to mm -hmm. like, do, with my music, I want to do schools, I want to help with mm -hmm. hospitals, programs, music programs, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And of course, I want to sing with millions of people just <laughs> yeah. not because like you said not because the money not because nothing it's mm -hmm. just a dream that i have mm -hmm. and actually my grandma always told me like i see you as an artist i wanna i wanna be alive when you be there performing right. and she's not so i prefer more the music for that too like i yeah 
I had to make her proud. You know, mm -hmm. whatever she said, what, she, I know she's looking at me and like, and I, I had to make her proud. Yeah, go so hard. I need to help my family with my dream and mm -hmm. make my dream come true for sure. Mm -hmm. 100%. Awesome. And, so. and performing in front of a million people, it's not, I don't think it's more like feeding your ego. It's like, it's just beautiful that you're able to connect with yeah, so many exactly. people. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know like so. imagine just being there and like you're, the people singing your song mm, and like crying. And you're stuff. just like, what? <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah, exactly. You know? It's a beautiful, beautiful yeah, my, thing. My favorite thing about that is the fact that like my music is like about life, which is hence the mm -hmm. name. My rap name is Life. And it's about things that hold dear to me and that are really heartfelt. And to reach that many people, that means that many people actually feel exactly. similar. Yeah. So it's like, it's cool to see that. That's yeah, beautiful thing. you have to connect. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go ahead and jump into the next segment, guys. Um, to Creative of the Week. Uh, we typically have this playing here in the studio, but again, we're still trying to put everything together. Du, du, du. So we're going to play the music video from Sasha Riz. Sasha, you want to introduce the video for the fans? Okay, well, Beta is a video about, wow, now you believe in me. <laughs> That's basically what I'm saying. Like, oh, you never thought that I was going to make it. You thought that I didn't have talent, but now you see that I'm doing my thing mm -hmm. on my yeah, own. So, <laughs> you know. And then so, now they're coming around. Yeah, now they want to be my friends and stuff. Like, no, 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 no. You didn't <laughs> believe in me. Like, you didn't start right. with me from the get go. So, mm -hmm. bye bye. Dope. So, that's Beta Bell. All right, guys. So, we're going to preview it right here Beta by Sasha Riss. <laughs> Sasha Wrist. 
Sí. Sí, señor. Sí, señor. That was, uh, the, I love the freaking mix of the song. So mm -hmm. the vocals laid nice within the beat. Um, of course, with me being a mainly English speaker, I only <laughs> caught some of the words. I need my boy to teach me more about it. <laughs> I still gotta catch up to it because it's Venezuelan Spanish, a little different from Mexican yeah, Spanish. Yeah, it is. Facts, facts. It is. Um, but overall, I love the fact that I love her singing voice. Singing voice is really dope. Thank you. Um, I love uh, how in the beat, I mean, how when she raps, she uses different cadences. So like one in the beginning, she was kind of chill, kind of not so fast or whatever. And then in the second verse, I heard her actually like really go off almost like almost as fast as it, like a Tech 9 rap. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah. I, I like that. She was almost chopping over there. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's really dope. Yeah, th exactly. That's what I was going to say. That's what I really liked about the song was the song structure. You know, you nice. had the singing for like the first four, eight bars. You switched it up to a different style for the next four, eight bars. And you just switched it up. But it all sounded smooth. You know what I mean? Like it yeah. all came together very good. So thank you. Yeah, like very big props for the thank songwriting. You, thank you. I appreciate sure. it. Definitely, <laughs> definitely sounds like something that would be on the radio. So. Yeah. I oh, appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. You got to make it happen. You got to yes, make it happen. we have to. <laughs> we all have to. That's right, baby. So that's it, Joe. I think that's it, man. Let's wrap it up, guys. Right. So we want to thank you for stopping by for another episode of Just Do The Damn Thing podcast with our special guest, Sasha Riz. Make sure you drop the comments. Do you think she did the damn thing? Beta, Sasha Riz. Drop the comments below. Let us know what you think. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and we'll yes, see sir. you guys next week. Until then, we're out. Woo! Do this. <laughs> our thing just living our lives and we don't stop open my group so you know we won't fly we